Okay, so a uh, pretty special holiday edition here for the Ohio Cast podcast. We've got legendary wrestler, a former wrestler and coach out of the Columbus area, Coach Mark Marinelli. Coach Marinelli, how are you doing today? Good, Zeb. How are you? I'm, I, good? I'm excellent, man. We've got a, a, a pretty crazy snowstorm up here right now. Uh, we're supposed to get over a foot of snow here in Geauga County, so it could get interesting. Uh, but I went and I cut trees down with Ferdinand yesterday. Uh, we cut some ash trees down, a couple 50, 60 footers, and they're standing dead and they're already seasoned and ready to go, man. So I don't I'm know. A bit too. Say that again. I got, a good fire. I got a good fire going as well. Yeah, you sent me a picture. I like that. I like that. Uh, you know what? My brother Chad actually heats his house with fire. Ferd just moved out my brother Ferd Ferd's house was a chimney that you walked up it was a spiral <laughs> staircase around a chimney it was amazing listen my brother Ferd's design <laughs> of his house was incredible and it was everything you would think it would be Mark uh I don't know if you ever went there Ferd lived in an old hay barn did you know yeah, that I think, been, I think I was there once I did like it yeah and, and he designed everything and Ferd's not like my dad Ferd's a real craftsman whereas my dad is just like it might not look good, but it's functional and it'll work and save everybody's life or be functional in the way that it needs to be. But Who Ferd had a looks like an artist, you know. Yeah, I'm telling you, Ferd. <laughs> Ferd had Ferd's a, a really good uh, uh, fabricator, and uh, he he made a really nice house. And they just moved out of it in the last two years, and he just sold it in the in the fall. So kind of a bummer. And that's the house he raised Ian in. And his sister Megan with his wife Stacy, and uh, it was a really cool setup. But you walked up the chimney. It was a big pipe, probably this big around from an oil refinery, in um, uh, in the Toledo or Detroit area, and that was it was forty foot tall to the center of the the center of it, and that was that you would walk up his his chimney, and he that was how Ferd heated his house. And Chad heats with two of an actual furnace in the basement. And he's got a garage uh, fire. Then he just keeps his garage doors open to his house. He's got two doors. And that's how they heat their houses. That's old school, right? Yeah. Know how to survive, right? <laughs> they know how to survive. <laughs> that's correct. You know that. And you wrestled with my brothers at Ohio State. Uh, and are you an 86 grad? I forget. Are you a high school 86 uh, grad? Yeah. High State or uh, sales 86. The sales 86. And when you were at the sales, were you a one or a two-time state champ? Uh, once. Once, and then you were a two-time All-American for the Ohio State Buckeyes, correct? Yeah, I lost to Bernie twice. You lost to Bernie twice? Yeah. I didn't know that. I thought it was once. No, I lost in the quarters. I think it was overtime and then uh, the finals. And then you were the head coach after uh, after Ohio State. Did you go in immediately and become the head coach at the sales? No, I, was, uh, I took a middle school job in uh, Grove City. And uh, I was I did that for one year. Then I was a JV coach in sales for a year. And then I took a job. Were you ever? Did you ever have any overlap with Luke Fickle? Did you coach Luke Fickle at the sales? No, no. I, I was there the year after he was gone okay. as a JV coach. But you coached his brother Mike. Mike, yes, was a state runner-up for you. Yeah. And then he's an NCAA All-American at Penn, right? Correct. So where's Mike Fickle now? He's uh he's in the Columbus area. He's in a Delaware, Delaware County. Okay. Probably making a boatload of money with his pen degree, I can only guess. I'd imagine. I love it. And then Luke Fickle just took the job at Wisconsin. He's the head football coach there. Yeah, yeah, he deserves it. Uh I'd like to see him be at Ohio State. I think other people would as well, but you, you know he's gonna do good things. He's just smart and hard worker and he treats people right. So he's got a lot of success. Hope he keeps doing it. Okay. So he coached with you at the sales for a couple of years, didn't he? Uh, no, no, he didn't. He jumped in the chair. I know that a couple of times. He, yeah. He might've done that a little bit. I mean, that's a guy you want I in your chair. Would, don't you I think? Wish he been like that. Yeah. He, 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 that's a guy you want in your chair though. Right. Yeah. He doesn't everybody want someone like that in your corner. Yeah, I do. I want I want Luke Fickle. I'd like to see him coaching the Buckeyes, but listen, 
I know you're a Buckeye alum. Yeah. You guys, I just got to be honest with you, I'm married to, my wife is from Ann Arbor, Michigan. I don't know if you know that. Uh, yeah, you told me that. Okay. So you guys are totally, you're unrealistic. You're you're nuts. You got your Ohio State fans are off your rocker. You're insane. You want this guy fired. I don't know about you, but your your legions, your Buckeye Nation wants Ryan Day's job. He's 45 and four or whatever his record is. He loses two years in a row to Michigan. All of a sudden they want this guy's job. I, I don't get it. Yeah, I don't know. I think Michigan went through three or four coaches before uh before they got the one they got now, though, though, didn't they? Yeah, but uh, yeah, whatever. I mean, I'm not talking about Michigan. I'm talking about Ohio no, State. No, 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 so I think people are unrealistic in general. Okay, I. You know what? I would agree with that statement. But your fans are the wolves are at this guy's door, and if they don't make the they don't make the final now, they want Ryan Day gone. I just disagree. I'm I'm a like a loyalty guy. It's just like what what the Browns did to Baker Mayfield. I just I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. And you know what? Maybe the guy's not an NFL starting quarterback. But I will say this. I'm loyal to him. He's the he's the walk-on guy. You know, he was a walk-on at Texas Tech, a walk-on at Oklahoma. We picked him in the first round. He, he tur- totally turned our franchise around in Cleveland with the Browns. And then we just trade him away and get this Watson guy. Just I didn't like it. It was a bad taste in my mouth. I'm a loyalty guy. That's just me, though. Yeah. I agree with you. I like that about you because you're you're a loyalty guy too, man. You you do yeah, a, you know, thanks very much. You you're a super loyal guy. You're an honest guy. That's what I really like. And listen, we can talk about anything we want to today. That's what I love about it. Like here, example, right over my back shoulder. Right over my back shoulder. Oh yeah, Randleman. He's how many, awesome. How many years? Listen, first off, this is a signed Kevin Randleman. Uh. Uh, tops card, right? So it's obviously rare because Kevin passed away. Kevin passed away the day before my son Ferdinand was born on February 11th, 2016. Ferdinand was born February 12th, 2016. But talk about Kevin Random and as a teammate. We can talk about whatever we want to here. How many years were you with Kevin Random? Three or two? Uh, two? Two years. But what I like most about uh, Kevin, other than he was a great person, like you, I like to watch him wrestle because it was always entertaining. He he always put on a show. He would always, uh, you know, g- give that extra effort, an extra something. Like I remember one time when he hurt his jaw and he just got down like a bulldog and smashed his jaw against the mat and got back up and he was all right. And he went out and won. But he he was uh, he knew how to work the crowd and uh, I re- I really liked watching him wrestle. Well, you were f- you were fourth twice at the NCAAs, right? Yes. Was that the was it one of those years? The year he was runner up. Uh, yes, I think it was his year of his runner up. But I forget who he got beat by. Ryland, Mark Ryland. Uh, yes. Yeah, it was. Yes. I want you to think about that real quick. Mark Ryland and Kevin Randleman are both gone. How wild is that? I mean, that's a crazy thing to think about, right? They both passed. Ryland passed last year, and Kevin passed, as I stated. February 11, 2016, and obviously I know that because it was the day before my son was born. But it's like wild to think. I mean, are you 54 now or 53? Yeah, 54. Dude, you're yeah. an ama- you're in amazing shape. And not that those guys weren't in amazing shape. Shape. They're both NCAA champions. But it's just wild. It makes you, it puts life into perspective when you think about it that way, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it sure does. Uh, I, I miss uh, uh, I miss Kevin a lot, and uh, going to his. Uh, Memorial, it was, it was good to see a lot of uh, guys that I wrestled with. And uh, he's just, all through the UFC and all that, he was just a pleasure to watch. And he was so much fun to be around. What would you say is a story about him? Like, we all know that, I mean, people that were at the NCAA tournament would see him put his jaw back into socket. But what were some things that you saw, like, in Larkin's Hall, in your guys' old wrestling room, that, that were, like, things that we wouldn't know about that Kevin Randall would do? Um, he, he was always um, just just pleasant to be around and a nice nice person and he was so uh, he was kind and gentle. But uh, the the other thing that really stuck out to me is like he he really when he worked out he really worked out at a different level than most other people did, especially in the weight room. He just had an extra gear and his intensity 
And when he wrestled or he sprinted or did anything like that, it was always a full hard sprint as much as you could be. And then a lot of people just couldn't do that like he did. And that always that always impressed me about Kevin. You know, you've been teammates with guys like this. You've coached guys like this. You yourself were a high-level guy. You're a two-time All-American for Ohio State. What's it like when you're around? Do you know right away when you have like a Nick Preston, you know, or you, when you have guys that are just, you know, Nick Preston's a two-time All-American for the Buckeyes. Do you know when you're in it and you're coaching guys like that or your teammates? Do you know right away when you have guys that have that it factor, like guys like that? Yeah, you, well, you know right away if somebody has what I call the extra gear. And a guy like Nick Preston or Kevin Randleman, they, those guys got extra gears. You know, like when you're working real hard, they're only in second or third gear, and then they, they, they throw it to fourth and they just blow right by you. And so they have that special factor, like you said. And, 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 when, and when you're coaching high school wrestling, you can see, like, hey, this guy's got that extra gear. He would be able to compete at the Division one, Division one level. And, uh, you know, every once in a while, you'll see it right away. And, but sometimes you just do experience and you got to get, watch them get into a tight situation. And then they come through and you say, Hey, he really does have an extra year. He can compete at that next level. In all your years at DeSales, you know, Preston's the guy that comes to mind to me. Nick Preston is just, I mean, Nick Preston wrestled Kale Sanderson in the NCAA semifinals. And I want to say, Oh, two. That guy could absolutely roll. One of the only guys who could actually push Sanderson that year. Uh, that's the guy that comes to mind me. And I, I, he like defines the sales to me, right? Like, I think he was your yeah, best guy at the sales. He had a, Nick had a red shirt year left, too. That's unreal. I, I mean, could have read, no one's going to beat Kale, you know what I mean? Even though he went with them hard, but could have redshirted maybe and won it the next year. But yeah, he's he's probably one of the best athletes that I've coached. I remember and actually seeing as well. I, you know, I remember Mark Canty was really good. Yeah. He was he a state champ. For you. He's a state champ for you. Yeah. Um, the biggest thing with you, though, you know, you had all these years at DeSales. How many years were you at DeSales as the head coach, coaching on the staff or head coach? Uh, 14 or 15. I can't, 15, I think. 15. And now are you in your 15th year or 16th year at Six, uh, 16? 16. 16. You know, you're halfway over the point. You've coached more at, <laughs> at you know, Liberty than you were at DeSales, but you've always had a good eye for guys, and you know when they're going D1. I think what you've done at Liberty is – I think you've passed up what you did at DeSales. Is that true? Have you had yeah, more champs yeah, at so. Liberty? Yeah, at this, uh, I think eight champs here, maybe seven at DeSales, and maybe eight, nine. I can't remember, Zeb, but somebody told me that on the, the – active coach with the most uh, state champs. Wow. And, and I'm not sure if in division one, I'm not sure if that's correct, but I'm sure like Burnett and uh, Heffernan, I, I don't know what they have, but you know, I didn't know that someone told me that it's like, I went back and looked at it and I started counting. I think I have 15, maybe 16. I, I don't know. I don't think you're a big keep track of statistics uh, guy. I, I, i'm not a stats stats guy like that <laughs> do you even know how many dual meet wins you have <laughs> don't have a clue that's actually uh, true uh, the thing uh, about it is that's actually that's actually true you don't even have an inkling is what's amazing yeah. about that you don't even have a clue do you i don't people, is it, is it over 300 that. it's got to be over 300 yeah i think it's over 300 i would i, I would just simple math would tell you it's got to be close to that, you know. But up until the last maybe 10, 12 years, like we didn't wrestle as many duels as we do now. In that COVID year, I think we wrestled 32 duels or something like that. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's right. 26 and 6 or something like that that year. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. So, so the biggest thing with you, and I think the biggest, uh, to me, people on the outside looking in, that really validates how great of a coach you are, is that you have Tom Ryan's son, Jake Ryan, was a state runner-up for you. And then how many Roselli's have you coached now? Uh, two Roselli's. They've both been uh, super, super good, and both been state placers, too, and great and people, too. That, to me, though, is the ultimate compliment for Mark Marinelli. I don't know about you if you look at it that way, but I would say that's the ultimate validation when those guys 
trust you and they and they're, they seem pretty hands off. They're not in your room. They're not telling you what weight to send your kid, their kids. It feels like they're hands off and they let Mark Marinelli and staff take care of, of Jackson Roselli and uh, Jake Ryan. And uh, what's that like for you to know that those guys let you do your thing and let you coach their kids? Um, it, it just tells me more about the kind of people that they are. And, and uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's nice to know that even though you have good people like that, they don't micromanage you um, like some other people try to do that don't even have a tenth of the credentials. And uh, so it's nice to have that confidence also to have a resource to pick their, pick their brains on what they might do as well. And the, the other thing we had is, is Carson Moran's. Uh, oh, Carson Carson. There you go. Yeah. He was, uh, they've all, all three of those guys have been like phenomenal resources, but also so hands off that it's, it's really, uh, most people don't, don't understand how hands off those three have been. They've let me, they've let me do it. They've trusted me and, uh, we've gotten good results. With Carson, the big thing for Carson for me was, and, you know, outside looking in, once again, I'm just an internet loud mouth who makes observations from, you know, 35,000 feet. Um, it felt like once you guys were able to get him a lower amount of matches, because he didn't wrestle in a sectional tournament until I want to say like his junior year, right, Mark? Yeah. Yeah. Did it feel like you guys had to almost pick and choose your spots for Carson Karshla? Yeah, he's – it's just he had to get – ready and used to wrestling you know although he's been wrestling a long time he really didn't have that many matches under his belt so the the grind and uh, wrestling too much would was probably not good uh good for him because he's he would practice at our place but he also would train more a lot more on his own as well he'd have a tendency maybe to wear himself out so you know kind of got to watch what you're doing with him because i like to say he's a he's a thoroughbred. He's another guy that had that it factor and uh, can't train him like a plow horse and you'll get bad results. So it's just, he, he was more of a, like a sprint type guy and always had to watch how much he was doing to make sure he wasn't overtraining. And, and when he does, he gets worse results. So that's a guy where it's like, you got to pull the plug on him more often than not. I think, I mean, once again, 35,000 feet looking down, you can see that, right? Anybody who has any knowledge can figure out this guy's super explosive. He's got crazy split step offense, wild hips. You know, he's got dynamite in his hips. And you just, that's almost like a guy, you pat him on the head and you tell him to run, right? That's what you do with the thoroughbred. You're not, it's yeah. not the, it's not Tom Miller standing over top of him, hitting him in the head <laughs> with a two by four, shoving him in the field, right? That's, that's one where you just, you got to let, let the guy run, right? And you got to let him run. You got to let him run and it's, and, but you got to watch how much he is running at the same time. Yeah. I think, uh, I think that's pretty, pretty true. Uh, with, with a lot of, uh, wrestlers, although some wrestlers can handle more volume and some of them can't, but if you approach them all the same way, then you're going to get, you're not going to peak at the right time and you'll get more injuries and you'll get more issues. So I like to kind of see what, I, what I've gotten and Taylor's tailor the workouts, uh, and off time for guys so that they can, um, so that they can be ready to wrestle when it counts the most. High school wrestling is, you know, it's like this thing you're, it's a labor of love. It's something you're not doing for a paycheck. You're doing it because you want to help kids develop. You want to help the lowest kid to the Carson Karshalas and the Nick Prestons of the world. You want to help them have a better life. And the vehicle is wrestling, right? Very, very, not very well put the, ve the vehicle is wrestling and, don't let it run you over, right? Yeah, there's no question. My big thing is you're old school with a lot of stuff. Like you're old school with your thought process as far as how the people are doing youth wrestling. But the way Moran did Carson's youth, he didn't have him wrestling in all the Tulsa and the kickoff classic and name name an event. He didn't wrestle competitively in a singlet till like eighth grade is what I want to say. Is that yeah. is that is that accurate? I think that's pretty accurate. And then it, it takes a while because uh, in, in a wrestling room, there's no out of bounds and there's no referee. There's no stalling. You know, a lot of guys can really look really good in the wrestling room. And then you put them in the boundary and 
you got different variables and it's, it takes a while to adjust. And that's really, it took him a, a year or two to, to make that transition really as well. And he just, he's got the it, like we've said, he's just got it. Yeah. He's got it. He, he does. I mean, he's and like he's a super person too. What was that? He's a super person too. Oh, he's a great kid, man. I love talking to the kid. He's an awesome kid. Listen, you got to go back and watch my podcast with Moran. It was a two T-shirt podcast. He went through two T-shirts, Mark. He was talking about Abkhazia and the Caucasus and, you know, where – I don't know that his – I had no idea that his dad was killed in a civil war, in the Georgian Civil War. I didn't know that. It, it blew my mind to talk to Moran about the things we talked about. And he had so many different philosophies on life and youth wrestling in general. You know, he, he runs a youth wrestling club, you know? Mm -hmm. so, so it's wild to see how he conducts the club, how many, how kids are wrestling. And then how Carson was raised and, 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 and uh, it, it's wild to think about. And he always wants me to go back there with him. And I'm like, listen, dude, <laughs> my one trip to Russia is already said and done. The haze in the barn on that, boss. I ain't going back to the Caucasus Mountains with you. It ain't happening. Are you going? Are you going? Uh, no, I, I'll go if I could. I just can't right now. Yeah, I'm not going. I'm all uh, set. I'm, yeah, I'm I, in to have. Uh, he's fun to talk to, and he's very entertaining. Definitely. I'm going to um, go watch that for sure. Uh, it's like two hours. Yeah. <laughs> he gets nuts. I know we're on a time crunch today. We only got like 40 minutes left. And I know that you're, you're, uh, you know, you got a lot going on. What's going on in this break right now for you? You know, we got Christmas in two days. What goes on for Mark Marinelli? How do you run the, the daily operations at Liberty Wrestling? And you put out a top 10 program in Division One every year. How do you do it? Now we just got done uh, running our own tournament. And then uh, I, I would like to take a couple days off, but we, we had a dual meet commitment in between there. And, and uh, we had to wrestle Springboro. We didn't do very well there. I uh, had a mixed mixed bag. And uh, then two days practice to give the guys three days off. And then we get back ready to go to uh, my favorite tournament, which is Brexville. And uh, we haven't wrestled in Brexville for, I guess nobody has in a few years. But I've been going there since I wrestled in high school. And that's kind of what I try to get my top guys ready for is to compete at uh, Brexville because I think it's, it's kind of a D1 preview minus Ed's and a couple other teams, but you know most of your hammers are going to be there. And you know, Brexville has such a good team this year; it's it's going to be good to face them and see where you're at, what you need to do. And but we really want to. Is that my uh, emphasis is always on learning, and you know you got to watch your guys wrestle and compete, and then sometimes it's better to watch them get beat, and then figure out where their weaknesses is before, you know, before March. You don't want to figure out you got a big hole and it's too late to fix it. And so we try to get our guys competition where they get pushed. And if they get beat and we learn something from it, then we're really happy with that. Um, if we get, if we win or we don't learn that we have a, a hole and somebody else can expose it later on, then, you know, that's not good for us. So we try to shore up all our holes after Brexville because it's tough and you're going to get beat. And it's really hard to win that title. It's, it's just a couple of notches below Iron Man, really, in my opinion. But it's really hard to uh, get champions there. So most of the guys aren't are going to get beat. So we'll see where they're at and just try to try to fill the holes in as much as we can before we get to league play. Take me back to the 1985 Brexville Holiday Tournament. What was Mark Marinelli doing? Where what weight was he, and what, who did he wrestle? Uh, 1980. 85, I wrestled Larry uh, Lampa, I think, uh, from Valley Forge in the finals. I think I wrestled Rich Barron. He was a state runner-up. And uh, I wrestled maybe him in the quarters of the semis. But I, I beat uh, Lampa, I think it was 85. Yeah, that would have been 85, 86. And he was a two-time state placer for Valley Forge, which back then Parma had Heights, Parma Heights Holy Name, Valley Forge. And I forget the other Parma uh, Senior, Parma Normandy. They had four Parma high schools. Franciscan. Yeah, four high yeah, schools. Padua they five. They had five. And they were all good. So Larry Lampa, I think that's who I wrestled. And uh, the year before, I, I, I remember uh, I was winning uh, 
with about 10 seconds to go and uh sam flippo ankle picked me for a five <laughs> and I, I lost that one so my senior year i won it burnett was uh, below me he won it at 112 i think and you were 19 i was 19 yeah and then in college you were a 140 134 142 right yeah, I was 26 the first year, then 34. And then I floated what, around a little bit. What weights, uh, what all weights did you All-American at? Um, just 134. One thir both times 134? Yeah. My sophomore and year, I think I lost 14 to 13 uh, in the blood round, I believe, something like that. <laughs> Who was it? Who was the blood round, blood round guy? Uh, Oklahoma State guy. I can't remember his name. He was – National champ, maybe the year after or something like that. Barnes or Smith, something like that. I don't know. You lost fourteen to thirteen in the blood round to an Oklahoma State guy. It was a lot. I'm not. I'm not sure exactly. It was a lot of points. <laughs> it could have been 2019 for all you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think wow. my senior year, one of, the, one of my coaches told me that I scored like 72 points in the national tournament. I don't. I don't know. I can't remember, but. Oh my God! It took me a while to realize you got to have defense too to beat the big guys. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so you guys, you and Adam DeSabato had this thing against the Brands brothers, or at least the Brands brothers. Some of their media in Iowa City made it out that you guys were wrestling the Italian Stallions. They always bring it up. So you guys battled the Brands brothers. Is that true? Yeah. Well, we tried. I, I wrestled him tough a couple times, and a, a few other times he really whipped me pretty good but there's a couple times where i had it maybe eight to four and another time was five to four or something like that and then a couple times he just ran over me a few pretty bad you pin you i don't think so i i i don't know i, I know he's i know he majored me maybe i don't know he might even attack me once i can't remember well once those guys get rolling and if it was in carver hawkeye you got this crowd you got Dan Gable over there orchestrating, right? Jim yeah. Zaleski, you know, grinding his teeth, screaming, and these guys would roll on people, man. You go watch those old school dual meets. That environment is second to none, man. It it, it is like yeah. got to be soul crushing, yeah. right? Yeah, it was it was pretty tough. My uh my senior year, I I hurt my back, Zeb, and I was out maybe three weeks, four weeks. I thought I was done. And then uh, my back went back into place, and I, I went and trained at a high school for three days. And then uh, I was really fresh, and I blew through everybody at the Midlands, and that's why I had brains in the final. I was beating them four to, I think three to two or four to three the whole, the whole time except for the last fifteen seconds when he, he got a takedown on me to win. And I was feeling kind of good about myself, and I was leaving. Uh, Ryan Arena, Northwestern, and out in the field there was a there was snow about twenty feet high, and in the middle of the football field there's a little strip, and Tom Brand is out there running sprints, <laughs> screaming at the top of his lungs. <laughs> I was like, man, I'm at the wrong weight class. <laughs> that guy's he's just he'd, he'd do anything to win, you know. Um, I'm, I'm, feeling pretty, I'm feeling pretty good, and he's got that extra gear, like just. Running that hard, it's like wow. And I really, uh, I wouldn't say that it was right there that I lost it, but I just knew that he would be really hard to beat. If I caught him on the last day or the third day in the finals, which I had enough time to recuperate, I might be able to beat him. But I just cut way too much weight at Ohio State. Just had an insane amount of weights. Oh wow! 25, I thought 30, twenty-five, thirty pounds a week. Oh was, my uh, gosh. You know, 25 pounds a week was a, on a on a good week. And you guys were old school. It was like saunas and plastics where it was like open. You could yeah. do what you wanted. Yeah. I like wow. it a lot better the way it is now for sure in college. Yeah, there's no question. You know, they added the weights, which, of course, guys are going to game the system and try and go down to the next weight and cut insane amounts. But you can't do that. You can't pull 20, 30 pounds a week anymore. You just can't. No, you can't. They just have to stay down lower the whole longer parts of the year, though, which uh, they've been able to do. So it looks like the college wrestling's a little bit more healthy now, for sure. There's different weigh-ins, too. We used to have, like, a night before weigh-ins, which has actually made it worse, really. Well, yeah, because guys were cutting weight. Like, I remember someone telling me that a Jack Kuvo story. 
I guess Jack Kubo would be 25 pounds over 118 mm -hmm. the night before, but he was a cross country D2 national champion and he was absolutely insane. And he would cut all of his weight in like a two workout setting, like how the U it was like what the UFC guys can do. Mm -hmm. They've got these almost like it's like a 18 hour, 16, 12 hour weigh in. Of course, the recovery and the recoup time is going to be substantially more. You're getting these guys on these one hour weigh ins. Imagine Carson Karshala on a one hour weigh in at 165, and I'm drawing 165. Yeah, it's too. It's a lot. Think about that. The yeah. first off, the guy's a one seventy four pounder. Look at his chest. Look at how thick. Look at his chest and sh look at that human. Yeah, I know yeah. you have. I mean, well, that yeah. guy's massive. Yeah, he's. You don't realize it until you grab him how thick he is. I mean, his chest. He's got the Caucasus Mountain Abkhazian <laughs> freak thing going, man. He's just different. He's yeah. just when you say. That guy's just different. Yeah. And you know that. Yeah. And you and you oh, know it yeah. since he was young. Mm -hmm. He's got yeah. real big, real big chest, long arms. He's just got a he's got a good build for uh, wrestling. And you don't he's not really super tall, but when you grab him and lock 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 with him, he's like, holy cow, he's thick. It's unbelievable, actually. Yeah. Like he he's like he's freaky. Yeah. But imagine that guy on a one hour weigh in. Imagine putting that. Think about this. Imagine if they were like the mentality then when you wrestled, well, we can get him down to 57. He's got yeah. 14. He's got 14 hours to recover. <laughs> that That's the mentality though. You know what I'm saying? Right? Well, I know what you're saying, but I, the reality is I don't think, uh, I don't think Dan Gable was cutting as much weight as the rest of the guys. You know, I think a lot of the other guys were cutting weight. I think, I think Gables were, you know, I asked Coach Ryan, like, uh, did you guys ever do two a days? And he goes, yeah, but we never did them two days in a row. And I remember doing three a days, day after day after day. You know, I mean, it's like you got you got to recover a little bit. I think Gable was ahead of his time as far as training goes, similar to what I think Kale is now. Yes, I would agree I with that. Kale Sanderson think, guy, they're not grinding like everybody else. Yeah. And it doesn't hurt when you're getting the, tw you know, the 10 best high schoolers every year. You know, arguably the ten of the ten of the best twenty, right? And yeah, and and what you're saying, he's ahead of his time. Kale Sanderson is ahead of his time. He, you know, it's the the old statement. You know, he, he's playing chess. Everybody else is playing checkers. He he's mm -hmm. literally playing a different game. It, it's it's insane to see. How wild is it for you to see commentary brands? You know, think about this. Just think about this. You're coaching Tom Ryan's kid, Jake. You coach the Roselli boys. You got your last one now. You were across the way from those guys in dual meets. Yeah. You were across the way and, and wrestled brands. It's, it's, it's wild to think about. Everybody we just mentioned is still in the game and not trying to be millionaires. They're in the game because they want to change people's lives and they want to win, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love it. Yeah. yeah I, I like, love it. I like, uh, I like Tom Brands. Uh, I like him. A lot. I like his interviews and stuff. He's just real. He's intense. Um, you know, I, I, I like watching him a lot. But I think Hale like learned a lot from Bobby Douglas. It seems like to me because the old Arizona State teams that broke the Gable streak. Um, and when Bobby Douglas was at Iowa State, I think Bobby Douglas has probably influenced Kale a lot. I think. I don't think a lot of people talk about Bobby Douglas, but I think he's one of the, one of the best coaches as well, or he was anyways. He's an Ohio guy, first off, Bridgeport, Ohio. Yeah. Um, I believe Bobby Douglas is the first African American state champion in the state of Ohio. I don't know if you knew that. No, I, I didn't. I didn't know that. I just know he's a great, great coach. And and it, it listen, he was low key, like you just said. Nobody talks about Bobby Douglas and how he flies under the radar. I want you to think about what Bobby Douglas was able to do in his career. First off, only one team in Division One has won West of the Rockies, NCAA Division One wrestling. That's Arizona State. And they did it, breaking a historic nine-year streak. Right? Wait, no, Iowa State broke the nine-year streak. They won the next year, right? Mm -hmm. They won the next year. And he did it. He did it with Ohio guys. He did it with Midwestern guys, right? Yeah. 
St. John's, Mike Davey, all those guys. Uh, what do you have? I think he had a Severn on the team, right? Zeke yeah, Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Zeke Jones is a Michigan guy. So if you and he look had, at he had Rex Holman for a little while too. But yeah, Rex Holman for a while. Yeah. But if you look at Bobby Douglas, what he was able to do at ASU, and then he leaves ASU, goes to Iowa State, and what he did there, and how many times were they runner up there? How many yeah. times were they a trophy team at Iowa State, which Kevin Dresser's starting to kind of build Iowa State back into when Bobby Douglas left them. And, and you know, Kel Sanderson was a runner up at Iowa State. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, seven, I believe. So, I mean, you think about this like when the guy left Arizona State and he went to Iowa State and they didn't win when he was at Iowa State as far as the NCAA tournament, but he won at Arizona State. It's, it's, it's mind boggling, like you said. And then, of course, he coached the greatest college wrestler in mm-hmm. Kale Sanderson. So, yeah. yeah, Bobby Douglas does not get the credit Bobby Douglas should be due. And uh, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. He, he is far greater than anybody gives him credit for, and he doesn't get talked about enough, right? No, no. Dresser's That's- doing a lot of good things, too. I think he's a really uh, pretty solid coach, too, it seems like. They, they gave Penn State a really good battle there a couple, couple days ago. Oh, uh, Kevin Dresser? Kevin Dresser? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I think Kevin. Simple. He does things simple. Kevin Dresser does. He's got a really simple, uh, you know, he's got a super simple uh, system. And you get, but you got to be on board with the system. If you're trying to buck the system and you're trying to go opposite of Kevin Dresser in his system, you're not going to be around for very long. No. He's getting results, it seems like. Definitely. And I, yeah, I'm, a, I, I like Kevin Dresser. I'm a fan when he was at Virginia tech fan, when he was at Christiansburg fan, when he was at, uh, was it Grundy, Grundy, uh, Virginia, I believe. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they do amazing things, man. I mean, that guy is, he's calculated. He knows the type of person he needs. He knows the personnel and he does a great job. Uh, back to, you know, talking about you as a coach, right? I, I like to think sure. about like when you have these guys who've got this it factor, You've had a bunch of guys go to the Ivy League, at least two I know that have won state titles for you, right? Yeah, with Furnace and uh, Fickle. Um, uh, I, I might have some other ones too. I can't recall them all. Talk about the vehicle, though. Talk about wrestling as the vehicle. And, you know, there's youth parents that want to take their kids all over the country and they think their kids are going to get scholarships. Talk about the vehicle of wrestling and using it to better your life, Mark. Well, just not, not, uh, I think it's good that you got to keep things in perspective and not, and you got to take some breaks here and there. And I think it's also good to kind of stay where you're at for a little bit. Sometimes I think people bounce around a little bit too, too much, always trying to look for a little bit better workout partner, always looking for a better situation instead of like being loyal to the person that you're that in a, in the association that you're with. Um, but I think if you start bouncing around like that, you kind of get the attitude that, you start th- thinking about, you basically start using people um, in, instead of uh, in, instead of staying where you're at and uh, growing where you've been planted. So I think that you kind of start, I wouldn't say you run over people to get to the top sometimes. And then when you get to the top, you're there by yourself and there's really nothing to celebrate because uh, no one really wants, wants to celebrate with you because you ran people over to get there. Uh, so uh, I, I like it. I like it better when our guys, I don't mind them going places to get more training, but ultimately they need to be able to be coached by me in the pressure type situations. And if, if you can't, if they can't do that, then it's really hard to advance. And um, I mean, that's probably the same for any big time program, whether it's St. Ed's or Blair or whatever you, the guy sitting in your chair when you're in the wrestling for the state title, you got to be able to trust, trust that guy. And if you don't trust them, then it's hard to enact a game plan, and it's really difficult to 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 get to where you want to be. Whereas if you if you trust the system, I guess they say the process, and you and you uh, you you drive the vehicle uh, the way, like kind of like Dresser would say a little bit, like you don't buck the system, and you do what you're supposed to do, and you also train more on your side, then you'll you'll be a little bit better. Sometimes people drive all over the place. They go 
to this school, to that school. They come back to this school, go back to that school. And they're just, I don't know, I think they're kind of wearing themselves out. And then when the, by the time they get to where it means something or by the time they get to college, they're just, they're just too worn out. And they've used, they've used wrestling to get a scholarship. And then once they get a scholarship, I don't know if they really have enough in them to keep wrestling. I don't that's know if that a, makes sense. No, that, that's, 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 yes, I absolutely agree. And it's like last night I went to Clarion versus uh, Cleveland State. And it's like, I don't know what people are thinking about the sport of wrestling, but if that's how you think you're going to pay for college, I, you're almost better get your kid working. <laughs> Get your kid working and they're going to get more out of it and probably have a less beat up body face and everything else. If they, if you just put them in a, a part-time job, wrestling is a hard way to earn it, man. It's a hard way. It's a great way to earn it, but it's just so hard, man. And that's the biggest thing is being a dad. Now it's like failure is such a huge part of it. And a lot of people don't want to have failure, right? Like they don't want to see their kids fail in wrestling. You got to fail every day. You're going to get your, your face kicked in about every day. And if you're not, you're not getting better. That's the other wild thing about it, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I don't know. I, I've seen – I love the sport. It's helped me out a lot, but I've seen it run over a lot of people. And uh, I've seen it break a lot of relationships with fathers and dads. I've also seen those relationships get mended and come back. But it's really it's really difficult because it – and the sport's really obsessive too. So it's, it's, it's really easy to um, – you know, because it's so personal that you can get so fixed on winning. And then sometimes you get so fixated on winning it you that you can do things that you normally wouldn't do, um, like take your kid all over the world. And then by the time you realize he uh, doesn't doesn't really want to do all the things that you forced him to do, and then it's too late, really. Yeah, that that that's like I I couldn't I want to be as far wherever that is where if that's over there I want to be over there. I don't I don't want to do yeah. that. You know, I just don't, I want to be as far away from something like that as I can. Who's on your coaching staff right now, coach? Who's your head assistant? And who are some of your assistants at Liberty? No, um, Mike, Mike Zucker is uh, my head assistant. And then I have uh, Bra Bracken Mead and uh, Chad Roscovich, um, Chris, um, Chris uh, Mike, Mike Ford. And uh, let me see, uh, Ross Whitson. And uh, let me see if I get got them all. I think I got them all. And then I have some other guys helping out, Adam Donahue, and a few other a few other guys. But Zucker's been helping me out a lot since I was at DeSales. And then the other guys have just recently come along. But Mike and Mike and uh, Ross Whitson are both from the Cleveland area, and I, I I just like Cleveland wrestling. Northeast Ohio wrestling is a lot. It's more my style. I like I like the mat wrestling. I like the edge wrestling and. Uh, you really got to earn it there. And like at the Ironman, uh, wrestling at the Ironman with all those refs, you just, it was just a grind. You weren't given any points at all. And, you know, you're definitely not going to get two or three points for stalling. You got to earn everything. And I, that's, I really, I really appreciate that kind of wrestling. So I like to have Cleveland guys on my staff because I think they know how to wrestle better. I mean, you were in a kind of golden era of Columbus wrestling, though, right? Like you guys had, when you were in Columbus, you had yourself, Ken Ramsey, the DeSabados, and then that was the last time Reedy had two state titles, right? They had a, a, a late 80s and an early 90s state title, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, Reedy and, won. I think Reedy's won three or four, but in there, DeSales won three, three as well, I believe. So, that, But you were in the golden era of Central Ohio wrestling, but yeah, now – yeah, Division Two. I think it's coming back. DeSales is looking good, and so is Watterson. So, and Harley has some some good individuals. I think that Division Two, Jonathan Oliver is pretty good. Well, I think Division Two is coming back, but you know, Division One is just those so those powerhouses up in the Northeast Ohio. They're just hard to hard to get around. But yeah, it was a good it was a good era there. But you had guys like Bob Dealey uh, that that helped generate a lot of uh, a lot of that Central Ohio wrestling. He did a lot to help. Um, that era in the mid seventies, the early eighties become really solid, especially anybody that was good in that era usually worked out over on the West side with him some, in some manner. So I look at it now in division one, you guys had the best iron, man. You kind of, you outperformed the Northeast teams. As far as if you look at finalists, you look at placers, 
Central Ohio showed up in Division One at the Walsh Ironman, and like you just said, it's it is the standard, right? Then you get Brexville kind of a tier down because um, what Brexville does is they invite the Michigan teams. And when you invite the Michigan teams, it immediately limits the field because of the stupid yeah. Michigan state high school rule. Man, <laughs> I'll tell you what, those guys, you talk to John Reeder, you talk to Wynn Mahalik, I don't think uh -huh. they can hate the Michigan high school rule more than they do. And as much as I do, you know, they have this like stupid rule that if you don't touch a school or it's this distance, whatever the rule is, so then that limits. If, you, if you're an Ohio team and you invite Michigan, you can't have New Jersey teams. You can't have New yeah. York teams. You can't have California teams. That limits the field, and I think that's the only thing. But to Todd Haverdell's credit and the tournament director's credit at Brexville, they get the value. Michigan's got five top 50 teams. The, they they're good. good. Those teams, the teams they bring are real. Yes, they're really good. So, like, to their credit, it holds Brexville back a little bit, but it also validates Brexville at the same time, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, I, I like that term. The one thing I like about uh, Michigan rules, though, is they kept – I think they kept the old weight classes still. They did. They did. Yeah, they're wrestling yeah, 189, 215, 71, 60, still, all they, that. Are they 103, 112, 312, whatever? Yeah. Yep. 312, so 19, 25, 30, 35, yeah. 40, 45, 52, 60, 71, 89, 215 heavy. Yeah, I like those ones better. I'm a fan. I'm with you. I like the old school 1998 weights myself, but whatever. It's just how it is. It's changed. You got to go with it. Uh, you guys at Ironman, though, Central Ohio. I talked to Coach Van Gundy. You know, his son was wrestling this weekend at the defensive duels. You guys showed up, man. You guys just – you really put it out there. Why is Central Ohio Division One really starting to come on now? Well, there's just a lot of – there's a lot of good places to train, really. And there's a lot of good clubs around that are doing it. But also there's just a lot of good schools, too. So although Central Ohio's got a lot of good quality wrestlers, they're spread out a lot. There's not like one or two schools that has a like a ton of the guys there. So – Although we did well at the Ironman, it probably came from five or six different schools as opposed to one or two. But there's just a lot of good, a lot of good training. You know, the high state's right there helping a lot of people. And then you just got so many Moran, you got Crazy Goats, you got all these, all these people pursue. You got tons and tons of different places to train. So I and I and I think also we have growth there. You know, you, and there's more opportunity as well. So, you know, like in our district, we have four high schools, so we have four wrestling teams, and there's more chance for people to um, to do better. So, I think I think that helps a great deal. Whereas in Cleveland and Northeast Ohio, although they have that tradition, they're kind of landlocked a little bit, and there's not a whole lot of growth. So, and I I also think. Like St. Ed's doing well in football year after year after year kind of hurt, hurts them a little bit as well. At the well it Iron does Man, at the so. Iron Man. No question yeah. it hurts them at the Iron Man. Yeah. So I but I think there's you know there's just so many so many good guys training and uh there's so many good opportunities that you don't necessarily have to just go to one school to be good. You can you can train a couple nights a week with top notch guys wherever you want to go. What's wild is that you were doing this at DeSales. You were so high level at DeSales. You were runner up a couple times at DeSales as a head coach. Why was there the move over? I know you're a family man. I know that there's opportunities and things come up and I know you're into your family having better opportunities. Why lead DeSales where you went to high school, you coached for 15 years. Why lead the DeSales program? And I'm going to go to the school that they just built in Powell, Ohio. I remember going, there was nothing around it. <laughs> now there's neighborhoods all around it, but why leave such a great situation where you were born and raised through it? Your brothers came through it. Your family came through it to go to Liberty. Why do that? You know, I, 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 I was thinking about leaving like probably four or five years before that. So it was like a five year process and a couple of the other schools I was thinking about going to, it just didn't fit for me. And then all of a sudden it just, you know, it just happened, but you know, I, I want to, if you're going to go to work every day, you want to be, you want to be happy and you want to feel like you're wanted and, and fulfilled. And, and it got to the point where I just didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel that. 
um, where I was. And then on top of that, the money, the, the money and the finances, I started having, started having two, three, four kids. It's a little bit hard to, to make it on that, uh, on that salary. So it's just, it was a good fit. And I also, you know, I was getting kind of stale on my coaching. So I needed, uh, I needed to, I needed a fresh look. And so moving there really helped me become a, a lot better coach because I had to start from scratch and I had to, uh, I had to reinvent it and I, I become a much better coach from a psychological perspective, uh, more so than a, uh, than a physical perspective, because, you know, my first year there, we had two guys on the team and, you know, I remember wrestling schools and getting beat 75 to three. And then the next year it was 34 to 20. And then the next year they wouldn't wrestle us. And then three, four years after that, we won a district title. And uh, that district title that we won, Zeb, was with all of my kids and not one of the kids on that team that was a benef uh, a big score at the district level was even a junior high state placer. And, uh, you know, so it, it was a challenge for me and also it was financially uh, more rewarding for me as well. And uh, although the first year was really tough, um, I, I got, I kind of got used to it and, and, uh, and we got it to, the point to where we're really, uh, we really got it rolling. And a few years ago, we uh, we were in contention for a state title. And I know we're not there right now, but we have 60 guys on the team approximately. And I'd say 59 of them were all through our, 58 or probably all through all in local school district, um, probably from sixth grade on at least. They're all my guys and they're all bought in and we're all, you know, we're all, they're all we're going to be, we're pretty good right now. I think we might end up being a little bit better by the end of the year. Not saying we can beat the Perrys and the Walshes or the Wadsworths and the Eds and stuff like that, but we're not too far. We're not too far behind them. And it's, they're all my guys, like all my guys. They're not from, they're not from other schools. And, and when I, when I went to uh, Liberty, that's, I mean, a lot of people said you can't do it because you just hit the cells, you get people moving in all that stuff. Not the, not the case. Most of my guys from the South were out of my youth program. Um, and then, you know, we got to really good at, at, at the Liberty and I just love the place. You know, my kids go to school here. I think it's, I'm biased, but I think it's a great school. And I, and I really, uh, I really enjoy being there. Zeb, but that's, I really, I really left for multiple reasons, but one is I just, I didn't, I was stale and I wasn't, I wasn't growing at all. Yeah, as a coach and as a person, so I just had to, I had to go. It's a good you move. Said, you said you have four kids. Yeah. How old are your kids? Um, twenty, eighteen, fifteen, and uh, nine. Wow, you have a nine-year-old. Yeah, a nine-year-old. <laughs> yeah. Boys, girls. Uh, three boys and a girl. Three boys and a girl, and you know the obvious question is, how many of your boys wrestle? Now they've all wrestled a little, a little bit, but um, if they want to get serious about it, I'll. They could be more, they could be better, but it just to me, it's I really want them to be a part of the program, but also learn a little self defense. And if they, they decide that they want to be really good, they can be really good. So my boy, that's a freshman, if he really wants to devote himself to wrestling, he's he's a really good athlete. He can be. I'm not saying he can be state champion, but he could be a good high school wrestler. And he doesn't want to do it. Um, doesn't want to do it. So it's not, I don't want to force my kid to do it. Um, there's other things I'd rather force him to do besides sports. Or not even force him to do, but um, it's just not, it's important to me, but also being his dad's more important. Five years down the road, 10 years down the road. Like I've had some good wrestlers that, they don't even speak to their dad anymore. So, and, uh, you know, it's a, uh, it's a shame, but not, it doesn't happen that much, but I don't definitely don't want it to happen to me or my, or my children. So, but if they want to be good and they want to do more then I'll take them to do more. And if they want to go, they just want to wrestle in high school. That's fine with me as well. Yeah. So my brother, uh, my brother, Chad has a son who's a senior Owen. Yeah, uh, he was all state and track last year. He's a super nice kid. Yeah. 
loves run and track brick, you know, it can run under 50 seconds in the 400 He's a qualifier last year in the 400 meters took 10th, the top nine, make the state finals in a uh, track. He took 10th in the 400 <laughs> and then he was eighth, which is all state in the four by 200, but he's a great kid. And I feel like Owen is someone who's going to get a lot out of wrestling, but when wrestling's done this year as a senior, Owen's done. Yeah. Owen, Owen's not going to go walk on somewhere and wrestle. Owen's going to get what he got out of wrestling and he's going to be able to leave it behind him and do track or go into a trade or be a teacher or whatever Owen wants to do. And ultimately I think my brother will be happy with that. And, you know, he's got another son, Bodie, that's a freshman. He's tough, but ultimately, you know, do I see those guys wrestling in college? Who knows? Right. Probably yeah. not Owen, but I think that they're going to end up getting a lot out of the sport as opposed to my brother didn't make them do it. And they're going to be able to walk away with satisfied with what they got out of the sport and what the sport gave them. Right. Correct. And that's a, that's a vehicle, right? It's not going to get abused. That's the vehicle. There you go. Yeah. And I think that so many people, when they're in it, they're just, they lose their minds. Yeah. It's easy to do. Wrestling is not a sport. It's a, it's a sickness. You know, it, if you, when you get the sickness, sometimes it can really destroy you and you got to keep it balanced. And, you know, I, I've just run over me a couple of times and so I just don't want to be run over again because it's really easy to get emotional. It's really easy to, um, cause it's in your face all the time. And when you lose, sometimes you take it personal and you gotta, you gotta balance it. And you really don't want to, I don't want to be in that situation where, I, where it's a personal thing with my son, if he loses or whatever, or anyone else's son for that matter. So we want to, I want to keep it really as a, my big thing is, a. As a learning experience, I learned that uh, from the old Minnesota coach, Jay Robinson. So we talked to him uh, a couple of years ago at the coach's clinic, and he just he uh, verbally assaulted me for 45 minutes about, <laughs> about <laughs> my philosophy and what, what's my philosophy. And your kids got to know what your philosophy is. And then my philosophy is just I want my, I want my uh, wrestlers to learn. You know, I want to facilitate maximum learning. That's our school district motto. And in wrestling, I want our wrestlers to learn about every event they go at every match and learn and improve. You, you know, uh, there's a couple of coaches that I, that I really like and respect. Zeb, you know, Coach Urbis is one of those coaches that, that I think a lot, I think a lot of. And uh, I remember one time we were coaching, I was coaching freshman football at the sales and, we went out to St. Ed's and we wrestled and we uh, played St. Ed's in football, and uh, we we beat them really, really, really bad. And St. Uh, coach Urbis was the coach there, and then instead of being mad, he he stopped our co head coach, and he knew me, so I got my head coach to come and talk to him, and he wanted to learn what we were doing to them to score, and what kind of blocking scheme and stuff like that. So here's the guy, Coach Urbis, one of the best coaches and the best programs helping out coaching football and then they just got beat instead of him getting mad. He's got his notebook out and he's taking notes and he's uh, learning what we did. So it doesn't happen again, you know what I mean? So that he can be ready for it. And that, that taught me a lot uh, there watching coach Urbis and how he did, how he did things. And I got a lot of respect uh, for him uh, through the years and uh, Bernie too. I think, think highly of Eric, Eric Burnett. Um, I like, I like him as an individual and a person. And a few, a few other coaches, but those, but those two guys really are. I mean, they really, really help their kids a lot. Most coaches do, but those two guys are really good, good guys, and I miss both of those guys. What was your series with Eric? You guys wrestled twice at the state. You said once in the quarters, yeah. and then what, what was the other time in the final? Did you wrestle in the state finals? Yeah, I wrestled in the state finals. So that was a that was a pretty bad year for me that year. I cut a lot of weight. Uh, my junior year, that weight class was 105. I couldn't, I couldn't go up because we had another guy there, and it was just, it was too much for me. I I remember wrestling in the semifinals. The, the guy from Steubenville, I think it's Young, Tim Young, maybe one of the Young brothers. I can't remember. He took me down like five or six times, and in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, man, if he beats me, I'm probably just going to default to six because I don't know if I can make weight. And then he had to take down, and when he took down, I just he couldn't get away from me. I pinned him so. Then I had to beat. I had to wrestle Bernie in the finals, and I was just 
I had to make weight that next day. I just didn't, I didn't have any legs at all. It's just too much for me. And he was too good. So, um, I got that, I got that solid. You have to have your A game. And so in the finals, I think he beat me five to two or seven to five, four or something. I don't know. I know he hit a barrel roll on me. I think he got four. And uh, I think I got out. I might take him down. So it was seven to three or something like that. But here's a guy that I, that I wrestled in high school that I respect that much. I think he's that good of that good of a person and coach. I know, I know you have good relationships with him too. Yeah, Ferd always tells the story. You were wrestling a guy from Chanel who was like a two-time defending okay. champ. Yeah. Donovan? Yeah, Donovan. And my brother said he sat there and watched you grind this guy into fodder. <laughs> and then you, he said, he said, was he a two-time defending champ? Yeah, he's two-time champ. He lost in overtime as a freshman. So he said you're wrestling him and you're on top of the guy and he said that you're hurting the guy. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was a spiral ride. Our coach did a lot of Gene Mill spiral spiral ride. So as he took down and I end up I end up uh, uh pinning him, taking him over with the with the spiral ride. And uh he was he was very he was very, very tough. He pinned his way through and uh came back and wrestled back. So he got third and he ended up Chanel ended up winning that year. He pinned the Reedy guy in the, for third and fourth. I think that's what caused him to win. But why go? So was, why go that weight? Though? But why go that, that weight? You got a two-time defending champ in the weight. Why go that weight? Me? Yeah. Couldn't you have gone another weight? Well, I could have gone twenty-six. And I I tried that a little bit, but I, at the end, I just I really wasn't big enough to go twenty-six. And I think I could have done well there, but I was like in between growing. And I, uh, and I went through a growth spurt after the season. I wrestled 132 at the juniors that year. That year, okay. And I got I got third at 132. I had to cut I I had to cut 16 pounds to get to 32. So I went through a growth spurt, but I was a little bit too small for 26. Most likely, that's I tried it, but it's just I, I don't think I would have been big enough to win it. So what, it sounds like you battled the scale a lot, Mark. Sounds like you and the scale had a lot of you had a lot of battles with the scale, huh? I had about the only one uh, high school only cut weight really like seriously my junior year. Uh, my my freshman I was freshman year I was eighty eight pounds, so I was like ten pounds under. Then my sophomore year I didn't cut any weight at all. And in my junior year I I kind of did. I should have went up a weight class, but we were locked by that time. My senior year I probably cut five six pounds maybe. And then in, in college I. I cut weight probably two two years. I probably cut too much. Gotcha. So you had a couple of years. You had three or four years of your career where you cut yeah. a lot of weight. Right. Yeah. And then it was, uh, you know, a couple of years when I didn't do it at all. And I, those were probably my better years for sure. Yeah. Um, my, uh, my, my senior year in college, I, I wrestled, uh, went out to junior nationals. I wrestled 163. I wrestled 134, I wrestled 163, and I, I was a match away from placing at the freestyles. Wow. Yeah. So, okay, when you were at Ohio State, uh, ultimately you guys uh, did, you guys won a team trophy your senior year, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, I think it's my senior year. We got fourth. You got fourth. Yeah. Knowing you guys are a top four team, and then to see what Ohio State's done, Tom Ryan gets them a title. They're third in 03. They're, they be, they were a trophy team, but now they're a trophy team every year now. What's it like to see the progression from Russ Hollickson to now looking Tom Ryan? Yeah, it's not, I mean, every, every year we're getting good good recruits, and we're in, the, we're in the title hunt every year. At least for the last decade we've been in the title hunt. It's just – it's really good to be a part of a program that's serious about serious about winning, and they got the – they got the facility, they got the funding, they got the drive, you know, and coach Ryan's a great coach. They got good coaching staff to do it. And it's nice. It's nice to do it, but you need all that stuff because man, Kale's just got it rolling. So you gotta, you gotta have everything and you've got to get the, you got to match the recruits and it's just, it's just, it's difficult to do, but we've been able to do it. We've been able to win some big 10 titles too. So it's really, it's really fun to watch it. And, uh, be close enough to benefit from it as well. Taking your team there to watch him and root him on. And it's, uh, it's a, it's just, it's really fun to be a part of it. I love it. 
uh, listen, we're encroaching upon your, we're over an hour right now. And, and we, you gave me yeah. this window, but I'm going to give you an opportunity. If you want to tell a Miller story, or if you want to tell a story about the sales, uh, I, the Marinelli's were tough customers. I know you got Marinelli stories. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that comes to mind that you can bless people with for this, for this Christmas listen that some of them are going to have? With the Go High Cast podcast, no, is there anything I, you got for me that comes to mind that jumps out about you? About anything you want to talk about that I've missed out on? I, I just, as I've always liked going to your uh, your parents' houses, uh, your house, and uh, being there because I felt like uh, I was around real people. Um, your parents are, are real. Your brothers are real, um, and I always enjoyed being around uh, people like that that weren't uh, uppity or weren't fake. And uh, I always liked going there and uh, hanging out with you and your brothers. And just that's I just really liked being around the Millers. Um, and I also uh, enjoyed my time with Ferd and Chad at, at Ohio State. And uh, your brother Chad's a really good, super good guy. And I just I just like the Millers a whole lot. <laughs> yeah, I love, I, think I, love coming over, I love coming over there and hearing, hearing Tom and. And uh, just the stories and everything, and it's, it was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I think the feelings mutual. I think the Millers got a got a, a spot in their heart for the Marinellis. There's no question about that. I love it, man. I love talking to you and love catching up with you every time I see you. I get smarter by listening to you. <laughs> you, you know, you know. Speaking of that, uh, I was uh, I'm a big I'm a big fan of uh, you know, a person I think really breaks wrestling down really good is Rex Holman. Oh, and uh, I was so uh, smart. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I really uh, when he writes stuff, it's kind of like that's how I think. I just can't write as well as he can, but when he writes and breaks stuff down, it's like, man, that's exactly how I would written it if I could write as good as as Rex could. But he's a good. I watched one of his. Uh, I read one of his posts the other day where he mentioned uh, mentioned your dad. <laughs> and what did and, he say? Uh, that, that guy, uh, just how uh, Tom Miller's, uh, I, I, I can't remember exactly what it was. It's just a real cut and dry uh, saying about like, basically this is the way it goes. And that's how your, that's how your dad always was, you know, no excuses, you know, get, get to work, get doing your stuff. If you get beat, you get beat. And, uh, and I just, I just, I just, I just, I was thinking about that. And I saw that he mentioned your dad and I was. If you got to be dumb, you got to be tough. Yes, that's exactly what it was. Exactly what Someone it was. just sent it to me. Someone just sent it to me. If you're gonna be yeah. dumb, if you want to be dumb, you gotta to be tough. Is what yeah actually what Rex quoted, but he does yeah. articulate and his writing is, is excellent. But oh yeah, you know what? If you're gonna be an idiot, it, life's gonna suck. It sucks yeah. to suck, Mark. Yes, when it, it sucks to suck, <laughs> you're going to reap the the the, the you're gonna reap what you sow. Yeah. Right. If you're a bad person, bad things mm. are going to come your way. If you're a yep. good person, sure, some bad things are going to come your way, but more good is going to come your way than bad. And it's just like super simple things. Here's what I'll tell you. And I told this to a, a meeting with people because I'm a career teacher now. Right. Mm -hmm. My dad told me at a pretty young age, hey, if you want to do iron work and you want to have a family, you're going to starve because this is not for you. You're, you're a slug. You need to go get a different <laughs> job. You have other skills working out here, working with iron welding, you know, 10, 12 hour day. It's not going to be for you, Zub. You're going to have to go to college. I listen, if more people were honest with their kids like that, <laughs> you'd have more kids doing what they, they would figure out. You know, they would figure things out if their parents were just more honest with them. And I, listen, uh, we're building the, uh, him and I were building a shed out here, like right before my son Thomas was born. And I, mm -hmm. I drilled into my hand with the, <laughs> and I, and I like threw the drill down and I was like, you know what? You were right. I'm horrible <laughs> at this. And I would have starved. Thank you. <laughs> and he just like laughed for a couple of minutes. He just like, he laughed. He just, the guy just laughed at me and he wasn't wrong. He wasn't wrong. And then, you know, I just think if more people were honest with their kids, here's what I'll tell you what I told my son first, back to like people <laughs> pushing their kids into wrestling. Yeah. 
you know, some nights you don't want to go. And some nights I'm just like, yeah, whatever. We're not going to go. There's the way there's way more people that are way more into wrestling just in the youth program. We're in here at Kenston. Well, but, but first three weeks, my wife, once she pays, they're going just so you know, once, <laughs> once my wife commits for the season, they're going. Yeah. And one day we were sitting there and he's like, yeah, I don't want to do this. I was like, all right, well, let's go. But it was when they were playing dodgeball and it was when they were warming up and they were playing all the games. And he was like, yeah, but I'm going to play with my friends. Then we'll go. I said, oh, no, 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 no. It's not going to work like that. I said, as soon as mom pays, you're coming every yeah. time we can come. And I said, I pulled him aside. I said, hey, Ferd, this is the last thing that I want you to do for me. This ain't the sport to do for somebody else. Right. You're going to have a lot of pain, a lot of heartbreak. You're going to get mangled and beat up. This isn't the thing to do for dad. If you're going to do this, do it for you. Yeah. Do it for you. Yeah. Don't do it for me. I, like, I'm like, I, I'm like, listen, my career is over. I'm the only Miller that doesn't have a state title. I can live with it. I'm all right. I got more nephews who've won state titles too. I'm okay with it. The hay's in the barn for me. The work is done. <laughs> my career is over. I'm okay with it. You know, I live with it. But don't do this for me, buddy. Do it for you. Do it because you want to be a really good football player. Do it because you want to be great at baseball. Um, he's going to start basketball next month. And everyone's like, oh, you're going to let him play basketball? I'm like, that's what he wants to do. What, do you want me to lock him in a wrestling room three days a week and make him cut weight and let him go all around and get his face kicked in? <laughs> you want me to, I, I want him to love it at the end of the day. I want him to have positive associations with the sport of wrestling. And there's other people that just don't think like that. No, uh, you're right. Yeah, I think the similar ways, um, exact, exact similar ways. And I think I think you can still be a really good wrestler to start in fifth, sixth, seventh grade. I think if you got the good skill set, you can pack and you you train right starting in the sixth grade. I think you can pass guys up. Yeah, and I think he's he's built like my wife. He's athletic like my wife. He's explosive like my wife. I don't know what this other guy, this Thomas guy is. I named him after my dad. It's appropriate. I'm going to let you know that. <laughs> he's like all over the place. He's got real gooey hips. He's flexible. <laughs> he's a big, gigantic galoot. He's just a good – he's five, though. He's five. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's five. The other guy's six. Like, right? Like, if you look at what Moran did, you look at what old man Chirella did, they held their kids out till eighth, ninth grade. I like that. I think that yeah, – I don't think there's too. anything wrong with that. I don't That's either. just me, though. No, I agree. A lot so, of different ways to get it, get it done, though. You know, a lot of different yeah. ways to be successful. Absolutely. Well, hey, Mark, we are past your time. I mean, I love talking you. to you. I appreciate you. Do you have anything else for me? Nah. You're going to get Rex on your show? I'm like, I would love to have Rex on my show. Rex yeah. Holman is a savant. Yeah. And about to retire from being a fireman, EMT, paramedic. Yeah, I, I, I really appreciate um, my senior year. His dad coached me at the Junior Nationals. And I, 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 almost, I almost won the Junior Nationals, but he was, uh, he was really uh, analytical. Like in the, and I, need, I needed that. I'm not like, you know, I need a game plan. I need to be, I need to be told this is what you should to do, and I need to believe in it. He, uh, he was a good coach for me that year. And, you know, I really, uh, I really think he's – yeah, you know, he's got wrestling down. I like to hear how he breaks stuff down, and uh, it's similar to what to what I believe. But I I would like to watch a show with him on there, and you and him break I'd that down it. a little bit. What I've learned is I need to shut up and listen more than I talk. Though. Yeah, I, I also uh, when Russ when Rex was helping out uh, Ohio State, I brought Nick Preston down there to work out with uh, Rex one time, and I think that was a year or two after Rex. Won the title, I can't remember. Maybe, maybe more. But uh, him and Nick were working out. Nick was uh, going to be a senior, and I said, "This Nick's really good." And after Rex worked out with him, Rick, Rex I think went and told Russ, "Say, hey man, this guy's really, really good. You should log on to him." And I think he did. So, you know, I, I really appreciate that too. But I think he's good. He has a good wrestling mind. I'd like to. I think a, a episode with him would be really fun to, to listen to and watch. I love it. Well, listen, the Marinelli's got Christmas. We yeah. got a blizzard. I appreciate you coming on. Mark Marinelli, head coach at Liberty High School, Powell, Ohio, Columbus, Greater Columbus area. Coach, thank you for the time. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year to you guys. Stick around for a little bit.
Okay, Merry Christmas, Ed.